Evening, everyone. It is evening on the West Coast. It's five, uh, five o'clock. Five yes. o'clock. Yes, and so that's evening. Out. All right, good evening. Yeah, good evening, everybody. I'm Rabbi Devorah Lynn. If I haven't met you before, I am the co-chair with Mirla Goldsmith of Jewish Earth Alliance, and this is our monthly briefing on our action alert, and we welcome you uh, wholeheartedly uh, tonight. We have a, a wonderful group from all over the United States, and uh, we have uh, some very interesting work that we're going to be doing tonight. So uh, first thing uh, would be great if you put your name in the chat and where you're from, and if you are in an organization or a synagogue or JCC, uh, and if this is your first time on the call, let us know. We'd love to hear that. Um, raise your hand if this is the first time uh, you've been on one of our calls. Let's see. Ah, it's uh, all our, it's all regulars. I don't see a hand up at all. Wow, that's great. And that's one of uh, the beauties. Alana, of we have Alana Goldberg raised her hand. Oh, Alana Goldberg, welcome. Hi. Welcome. Thank and you. Sharon, Sharon uh, Goodman is also raising her hand. Uh, great. And Alana, where are you from? Uh, I'm calling in from Oakland, California. I'm with Jewish Youth for Community Action here in the Bay Area. Oh, uh, great. Terrific. And who was the other person? Was uh, Who was the second person who was new? Karen Goodman. You're unmuted, Karen, but we can't really hear you. I'm from Farmington Hills, Michigan. Great. All right. We've got people from coast to coast and in the middle. So that's wonderful. Welcome to all of you and welcome to, again, to our regulars and everybody in between. Um, I, uh, I wanted to just let you know that it's been one of those weeks and um, Shani uh, Mink, who is from the Jewish Farmers uh, Network, could not make it tonight. And our speaker, who is from uh, Representative uh, Pingree's from Maine, uh, works in uh, is staff. There was an event that uh, her boss, uh, the representative, is holding tonight. And so she's going to come on later in the call. So we're going to change our um, agenda order a bit tonight. So first, I would just like to say a couple words of Torah. I like to open with an inspiration. Uh, we like to open with an inspiration on Torah. And uh, Shana, um, Shani Mink will, will come back another time to tell us about, uh, to give us some inspiration and tell us about the Jewish Farmer Network, which I find an amazing thing to even say, the Jewish Farmer Network. So, um, I wanted to just talk, I wanna wish everybody a Shana Tova, a, a good new year. And I hope that your Elul, the month before of preparation, uh, held some inspiration and enlightenment for you and that your um, holiday services uh, or whatever you did for the uh, Rosh Hashanah this past weekend uh, was inspiring. And now here we are in these days of um, Yamim Noraim, the days of awe, and the period of time we, where we are supposed to work on ourselves, um, our, uh, take an accounting of ourselves, and think about the last year, but also think about what we want to do into the new year. And I don't know about you, but um, how many of you might have been raised with the idea that you had a good angel on one shoulder and a naughty angel on the other shoulder. And they were always whispering in your ear. Uh, and there was this conflict going on. Raise your, raise your hand uh, manually. If uh, I, I see some hands going up there and, um, and, and let me know. And so I imagine that if you had that in your background, that you also, if you were in a, a religious school or raised in an observant family who went to high holiday services, 
that you may also have had the um, impression that there are two books up in uh, the sky that God is mulling over. And uh, there's a book of death and a book of life. And I'd like to reframe that a little bit, that the book of life, I like to see as a book of enlivening, that it helps to increase things. And the book of death are things that we might want to get rid of, habits and activities and attitudes and behaviors that we may want to diminish at least and kill off <laughs> at the most that we want to get rid of. And then the other book, the book of life, is where we want to put things that we want to enliven in this coming year, to increase, to excite, to make more manifold. So I'm thinking in terms of our climate work, how into the, the book of diminishment, we want to think about fossil fuels and uh, food waste, and including food trash waste. Uh, including buying too much and buying things made of things that are not good for the earth in terms of taking care or, or being aware of, of protecting our wildlife. And uh, we want to put those uh, in the, well, we want to be aware of the wildlife, but we want to put the things that, the habits that we have developed over all these years, because we live in this culture and of abundance and we live in this system that kind of uh, forces us uh, into wanting so much and um, perhaps misusing things and wasting things. We want to start putting them in that book of diminishment and into the book of enlivening. We want to put things like composting at home even if it's just on our countertop uh, with um, a, a system that hopefully uh, your, your neighborhood or your city or your town is, uh, can promote. We want to put in, um, let's see, what the, let me think of other things. <laughs> we want to put in doing the, the active work of, of helping with, of, of promoting legislation that we are doing, of buying less or buying things that last so that we don't have to be buying so much and of, of recycling things. And I, I've been introduced to this buy nothing website, which is very fascinating that you um, go on it and you can find things that you don't have to buy that people are willing to give away. And so I envision these two books to hold them and to share them with other people um, who you want to get involved with the work that we're doing to uh, enliven those things that we may not have been used to that are going to be healthy for the earth and to diminish those things that are not healthy. So let's dream this new year of 5784 of the world we want to let go of and the world we want to thrive in. And I pray that using these two books as a metaphor will help us to do that and that our best dreams will come true. So Shana Tova to everybody, Gamar, Khatima Tova. May you have a good sign-in signature to these books, to, to the book of enlivening for the, this coming year. So I want to turn over uh, the uh, frame to Phyllis Blumbler, Blumberg, excuse me, from uh, Pennsylvania, who is on our steering committee. And she is going to talk to us about our wonderful lobby day that we had at uh, Tisha B'Av and how a great success it was. So I, I think that we should do a little success dance here to um, Cool and his gang. Celebrate good times, come on. So come on, Phyllis, tell us how great they were. All right, we were great. We were great <laughs> and we're gonna get greater. Um, our 
lobbying over the summer on, on Tisha B'Av was really a huge step forward for Jewish Earth Alliance and for all the other people who joined us. Um, we went originally from being letter writers who sent the letters off, but this is a couple of years ago with people going to their offices and saying they're representing other people to during COVID, we sent letters ourselves. And now we're going to face-to-face -face meetings with staff of, this, of our representatives. And that is a much more appropriate and meaningful way to advocate. So we are really taking a big step. Not only do we take a big step forward, and for many of us, it was our very first time advocating in person at a meeting, and that was probably scary to many people, but we also took on difficult assignments. We were not taking easy tasks that we knew the senators would do, so it wasn't like, sure, we'll be happy to do it, but we were taking on asking them for, for difficult things. So a couple of numbers, which I think are really worth celebrating. We had over 200 people sign up to, to, um, to uh, lobby. That is a very large number for a very small organization like we are. Um, and the interest in lobbying this way is definitely growing. We got feedback from first time people who had never lobbied together, who had great trepidations for doing it, saying, hey, that was actually fun and it was really meaningful and far less stressful than we thought it would be. One veteran lobbyist from our, one of our groups told us that he thinks that these meetings are an excellent learning experience, both for him and for the staff. So how many meetings did we, how many people did we meet with? We met with 27 Senate offices and one meeting with one Senator. Who... Oops. Oh, Phyllis, you've gone mute. Uh, uh, uh. Let's see. There you go. Uh, I didn't touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was me. Oh, might've been me. Um, go back a sentence um, or two. Did you hear how many people we met with? We met with yes. 27 Senate offices and one Senator himself. I think there's a hundred Senators total. We met with almost a third of them. That's really remarkable. And this time we met with many more Republicans than we had in the past. And they're much more of a challenge because they may not even be in the same camp that we are in terms of the book of what we want to include and what we want to, what we want to add to and what we want to take away. Um, and we, some people may have felt, well, we didn't get the results we wanted, but I don't agree. I think we got the results that we could have anticipated. These issues were complex. The rules are slightly different. Um, in order for people to sign on to bills such as um, the, the, the Wildlife Act, uh, Recovering America's Wildlife, they didn't, we want it to be a bipartisan effort. So the rules that the senators made was for every Democrat that signs in, a Republican has to sign in. And that makes it much more difficult for us to talk to people and say, will you sign on? And um, the farm bill is complex. And we were asking for complex things that they don't even necessarily understand themselves. Hang on, Phyllis. Phyllis, let's um, mute that person. Let's see. Um, I, I, I want everybody to be able to hear you clearly. Um, let's see. I, I think it's we're done. good now. It's Keep done. Good. Okay. Thank you, Amy. Okay. Keep going. Um, <clears throat> and one of the overriding things that I learned from this is that we learned and the staff person learned. So it was a nice give and take and a nice exchange. We know where the senators feel on issues. Sometimes we gave them information. And probably the most important thing that came out of all of this is we're establishing a relationship with the staff who are in charge of these issues. And when we come back to them in the winter, and we know we will, they'll recognize us and they'll be, it'll be more friendship. It'll be more person to person as opposed to much more formal. So I just want to say that I think we all ought to celebrate, give ourselves a pat on the back and realize we've done a great job and we're only reaching our stride. We're gonna get better and better because we're going to be lobbying again in the winter for, for a Tu Bishvat and we're gaining strength. We're gonna gain strength in numbers, in numbers of people lobbying and we're gonna gain, gain strength in how much impact we have. So Yeshur Koach to all of us and may we go from strength to strength. Yes, Yasha Ka, from strength to strength. That's very good. Wonderful. It's wonderful news. It's really was a fantastic 
uh, lobbying a uh, couple of days and uh, uh, really great to see the participation that we had again across the country. Um, so next I would like to uh, introduce Judy Burlfein who is on our steering committee and she is from, she is our action person for our network meetings. And she's from Encinita, uh, California, just uh, north of San Diego. And uh, Judy, go ahead and tell us what we're gonna be doing tonight. Okay, everyone, I hope you're all ready because now you get to go to work. <laughs> Usually we have our speaker first to kind of get you prepped, but because as Deborah mentioned, because of her schedule, we're gonna be doing the action now and then you can relax. And when she comes on and um, you can learn more about her work and we're, what we're gonna to do tonight, I assume many of you have heard about our Rosh Hashanah card campaign. So we created- Yeah, I think so, okay. Oops. <laughs> Someone got unmuted. Mute. Was it me? Like Elaine Levy and Bob Schultz need to be muted. <laughs> okay. I see a few other people who are unmuted. Corey Goddessman, if you can mute. I'll mute. So, um, our Rosh Hashanah card campaign. Amy, if you can share your screen and I can show everyone the cards. We have created these beautiful cards that Amy will show you shortly, um, designed by Amy Cohen. And we are returning to some of our original roots by writing these cards and we're gonna send all of the cards. Oh, more people need muting. Elaine Levy, there. Uh, we're having technical difficulties if you just bear with me a minute. Okay, take your time. So everyone sit tight because this is a little confusing. We have these beautiful, gorgeous cards that our team in Washington, D.C. has many, many of them, but they're all blank. So tonight we're going to be writing the message that goes inside those cards. And the way we're going to make it happen logistically. Okay, so here's our beautiful card. It's all these hands reaching up to the earth and um, Lishana Tova for, for Rosh Hashanah. What I want you to do now, you can go to the next slide, Amy, is I want you to open your email and I want you to start an email and address it to letters at jewishearthalliance.org. That's the first important step of this project. And um, let's see if I can see anyone. If, if, you've, if you've already done that, physically raise your hand. So if I, I can get an idea of how long it will take people to do it. The, the email address is letters at jewishearthalliance.org. Sometimes it's a little confusing to open your email while you're on Zoom, but I am confident that you will be able to do that. So I haven't seen any hands go up. And most of you have your, your video muted, so I can't even see you. Um, but once I see one person with their hand raised, that, they, that they've that they opened their their email. I pulled out. Uh, so actually the... the Okay, and whoever that person is, thank you for muting them. Okay, I'm, I'll give you a minute. People look a little, oh, Louise raised her hand. Wonderful. Okay, so, so that's the, the first task. Uh, the second task is to stop for a minute and think about some things that has impacted you related to climate change. Like for example, in, for my, in my letter that I've written, I wrote about the fact that we canceled two train trips. One was because of fires and the other was because of floods. So we're gonna, the email, these emails you're gonna address 
to your member of Congress. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself by telling you the content. Let me give you the whole overview picture. You're going to address the email to your three letters of con three members of Congress. So, for example, my email says, "Dear Representative Levin, Senator Feinstein, and Senator Padilla." That way, we know who all your members of Congress are. We're going to transform your single letter into three letters, one for your member of the House and one for each of your senators. So start your email by addressing it to your three members of Congress so we know who to deliver these cards to because we are physically going to go onto the Hill and deliver these cards. So once you've can't, you can't open your email when we're sharing our screen. I'm, I'm looking at Marth Blumenthal's comment. If I get out of it, I lose the entire Zoom. So I normally, I could, if, if you didn't share your screen, I could, uh, I could click on uh, uh -huh. an orange, but now I only have red and green. So Should see if you can click on escape to minimize it and make it smaller. That worked for me. Okay. Can you or, escape? Or what you can do alternatively is in the upper right corner of the Zoom. I got it. There's I got a it. little icon it. and it says view. If you click on that, you then click on the option to exit. Uh, uh, ex what's it called? Exit okay, full I screen. I think he got said he got and it. then got you it. can get into your email and still keep the zoom going perfect okay thanks for sharing your questions and your answers that's really helpful so within this email that you are sending to your member of congress you're going to tell them two things one your story and how climate change has impacted you and the second is our ask and our ask is related to what our speaker is coming to speak on and i will give you a little background on that it's the ask is to co-sponsor the Agriculture Resilience Act of 2023, because this act will reduce greenhouse gas emissions associated with agriculture. This bill, and now I'm going to give you a little background on the bill, because had we done things in reverse, you would have already heard about it, but now you're hearing about it from me. So this bill has, was introduced in March, and our speaker who is coming a little bit later is from the office of Representative Pingree, who introduced the bill on the House side. And it was, she's from Maine and Senator Heinrich from New Mexico. Someone tell me if I got that wrong. Um, on the Senate side, the bill already has 13 co-sponsors in the Senate and it has 44 co-sponsors in the House. So when you write your ask, we are gonna provide you with information so you know if your member of Congress already sponsored it or if they are yet to sponsor it. So if they have not sponsored it, you can say, please co-sponsor HR 1840, the Agricultural Resilience Act of 2023 to reduce greenhouse gas emissions associated with agriculture. If they have already co-sponsored it, you can thank them. And as I'm telling you this, I'm realizing that we, this is a little bit tricky since we're trying to do this three in one letter. And Mirla is now putting in the, um, in the chat, the link that will tell you who the co-sponsors are. And if you have any trouble getting that link and managing all of these tasks at once, just write in the chat what state you're from and I can look it up and, and respond and let you know if, you, if your member of Congress is a sponsor or not. So, that, so now you're asking, well, what is the Agriculture Resilience Act? Which is a very good question. And it is a bill which will address climate change in um, from six, six different angles. And I'm going to give you a little background. And when our speaker arrives, she will definitely give you more and that she has a more intimate understanding of it. 
But there are six important areas in which the, the Agriculture Resilience Act will um, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, will provide funding for agriculture research, it will address soil health, it will protect existing farmland and support farm viability. And then um, here are some other interesting things. It'll support pasture-based livestock systems. A lot of you probably know about regenerative agriculture and how um, pasturing the animals can improve the soil health. We'll also boost investments in on-farm energy initiatives so that you can we can set up a way to make it more viable to put solar panels on a farm so you can keep farming. So it's not an either or choice of solar panels or crops, but you can have both. You can even provide shade for animals. And then lastly, it will address food waste. So that's the bill that we're um, supporting here. So I'm gonna give you a few minutes to write your email. This is, if you're a little confused, I understand because we're telling you a lot of things at once and there's a lot to incorporate. But the great thing is once you have this letter written, you're going to just hit send and it's going to come to Jewish Earth Alliance. And what we will do at our end is we will, if you only wrote one letter, we'll turn it into three letters for each of your members of Congress. We'll print them out. We'll literally paste it into these beautiful Rosh Hashanah cards. And then we will hand deliver it to your member of Congress on the Hill. So it won't just show up as a random email in their inbox. It'll be part of a whole Jewish Earth Alliance endeavor. So I'm guessing there are probably people with questions. So if you are busy writing your email, feel free to turn your volume down so you're not interrupted by the questions. But if you have questions, speak up. Um, I'd like to ask with a list for the senators that have the 13 that co-sponsored. I see just the link for the House. Oh, OK. Well, Louise, I know you're in California. Padilla is a co-sponsor and Feinstein is not. Um, I'm just put in the in the chat. I just put the number, the numbers of the Agriculture Resilience Act numbers in the House and the Senate. And I just posted the list of Senate co-sponsors, co senator co-sponsors of the Agricultural Resilience Act. Some of them have dates after their names. You can just ignore that. And I am about to post the names of the House co-sponsors, which all of which I'm not a miracle worker. You just go to congress.gov. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for posting those in the chat. That's wonderful. Um, and, you know, we have about, um, uh, let's say, five, seven minutes uh, that we can uh, do this at least. Um, and hopefully our speaker will be able to get off of her in uh, her work with Representative Pengree. But we'll give you that amount of time. Yeah. Someone, so I think. Judy? Yes, Maury. Maury, if, if we are thanking them for co-sponsoring, then that cannot go to the three. We can't have a single letter because I've only got one co-sponsor. Okay. Uh, you know, it's not clear how many letters am I writing here. That, that is very clear. So, so we're probably going to have to do a little manipulating mm -hmm. of the letters when they arrive with us. And I think this is a little more complicated than we realized. Yeah. All right. So if you could indicate in your letter, you know, thank you, the way, the way that would be easiest if you say, thank you, Senator Padilla for co-sponsoring. And then under that, you write, um, Senator Feinstein, please co-sponsor or representative so-and-so, please co-sponsor. That way, when we convert your letter into three letters, we'll know yeah. okay. who's sponsor and who's not. I'm pretty sure I won't be done in three minutes, but... Do the best you can. And if our speaker's not here, then we'll give you a little more time. Is there a reason I can't ask my question? Go, go ahead, ask your question. Yeah, I've had my hand raised. Um, so if this is so complicated for us to do and we're people who are 
actively involved with this organization. How are we supposed to convince our congregations to participate in this? I have been struggling. I put together a, a, a shortened flyer of using half of it as the photograph, uh, the uh, graphic about wake up call to action. And the other half, uh, briefly stating what, what we're doing and why we're doing it and giving the link to your website um, where it is fully explained. I had to read that link about four times. I mean, double-sided instructions. Uh, I'm very concerned that if, even if I get people to take this flyer home with them, that when they, get, when they see the amount, the wordiness of this uh, and that they will say, I don't understand this and, and not do it. So um, if, it's, if it's this hard for us, how can we make it easier for our congregants to participate? That's a really good question. So I'll share my personal experience. It's, it's hard to get a lot of people all in one fell swoop to participate. I will tell you um, on Sunday, I attended a Rosh Hashanah dinner and um, there were about 20 people there. And I was there and I talked with people and I answered their questions in person and we got 10 or 15 people to write letters. So I think it's easier if you approach smaller groups or if you set up a table at your temple so you can answer people directly. It's hard, I, I totally agree. It's really hard just simply through email um, to, to encourage people to participate. But if you start small, um, you might have more success. Actually, I went up to the Bema with a copy of the flyer and a copy of the card. I actually went and printed these cards. I thought we were supposed to do that as part of, of the encouragement for people to participate. And no one took any. But I took it up there and I showed them and, um, and I tried to say it's easy. <laughs> uh, and, and so people know they could ask me if they have questions, but... Um, yeah, I, I, it's it's hard to uh, figure out how to implement it if, you know, if you, I thought we were supposed to have it as part of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So it sounds like this is, I'm going to try to get it in my newsletter as well. Well, that's great. And I, to, I hear your frustration. Um, I don't know if you want to know, but I've been working on getting my temple engaged for like, 10 years and oh no don't tell me that <laughs> but, but there's but there's just little silver linings all you know the person who organized the event that I was at was one of was a teen who was one of our who we mentored and she invited these 20 people I didn't invite any of them so it's it it's not something where you can just walk up and get 100 people to do it but it's, if you take it step by step but uh, also, I think, um, Judy, that at the time you were starting to get people organized, climate was on the back burner. And now it is not on the back burner. It is on the, it's on a gas burner up front. <laughs> and uh, Susan, where are you located? I'm in Walnut Creek. Uh, the congregation's oh, in Walnut Berkeley. Creek. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, 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 the, con the Berkeley congregation. Yeah. 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 Um, but but um, so, you know, it, it's it's on the front burner. People are much more aware. It's in the front page of the pa um, paper every day. Um, and this is a way to um, intervene with despair. This is a way to do something. Right. Um, which I think is is. Um, <laughs> oh, no, it's burning gas. Somebody said. Um, I just also want to make one more comment that we really <laughs> should welcome Ilana Goldsmith. Um, uh, who joined us today? I encouraged her because okay. she should tell you what what, her, what who she represents, and she can bring in um, some young people to help us with yes. our cause. Yeah, exactly. Um, yes, I saw Alana uh, is with the. Um, uh, I'm sorry, it's the JC. 
see I, uh, I, I've got my uh, uh I'm in, with in the Jewish Youth for Community Action or JICA yes there you go the yes great yeah we're very happy that you came tonight um also I uh, well you know I wanted to let me let me just check in with um the staffer but um okay, if she so is Devorah, I'll yes uh, f uh, sorry Judy please I'll have people um, keep sharing if anyone um has has had a, a a Rosh Hashanah card project like I shared about the party I was at if you would like to share or if anyone has finished writing their letter and and wants to tell us that you succeeded and how it went okay uh, Scott oh are you, Scott's not going to toot his own horn <laughs> okay go ahead Scott Lewis from Temple Solau I he did a great job <laughs> and and I did my cards he handed me six cards and he printed them up and Scott could you talk about what you did at our reverse Tashli? oh sure we had a, a Tashli ceremony on Saturday reverse Tashli of all things taking the stuff out of the water there mm -hmm. and uh, we thought that would be a good place to have these postcards so we had a little table there and uh explain what the story was and we had all these beautiful postcards from from the group there that we printed at fedex and gave them out there and then so we'll do that and uh we'll go through another round i just sent in a something to our communications person to distribute that and and tell they so folks can drop off the cards at yom kippur and uh and maybe i guess we have maybe enough time to collect those the first day of Sukkot as well before we mail them back in. Thank you. That's great. I see that Lynn Feinerman has her hand up. Oh, and Devor, are you here? It looks like Eden maybe. Yes, Eden is here. Um, but um uh sorry, uh but Chelsea Glenn uh says that she is finding headphones and then she's going to dial in. Oh there she is. Okay. Um, so Amy, if you could um, let her in, but Judy, I wanted you to try to uh, want, uh, wind this up to, to close this out. But I, I think the reason that we were trying, we would love to have you all do this in person, but, we, but people were finding that that was difficult and then they'd have to mail the cards. Um, so we thought, well, we can do it electronically. You can send your messages to us and we can make the cards up for you. So there are two choices here. If you feel like you can throw them in an envelope and mail them to us, that would be fabulous. But we are willing to do it electronically as well. Okay. So we have a few people who raise their hands, but if our speaker is here, we, we can. Yes. Um, Amy, did, is she in... Let's hi, see. yes, this is here. Chelsea. Here. Chelsea's here. Oh, oh. hi, Chelsea. Uh, I'm sorry we can't. We, I'm sorry we can't see you, but let me introduce you. It's my honor to introduce our speaker tonight, Chelsea Zisman Glenn. Uh, she originally grew up in Northern California and studied public policy at the University of Redlands, um, and she is a policy advisor for Representative. Shelley Pingree, who is represent who represents Maine's first con congressional district, and Chelsea, I think I told you that's where I am now. I'm, I'm on Deer Isle. Um, Chelsea advises on a number of policy areas, including agriculture and forestry. Representative Pingree serves on both the House Agricultural Committee and the Appropriations Subcommittee on Agriculture, and she has introduced a number of bills that she's advocating for in the farm bill, including the Agricultural Resistance Act. The ARA aims to give farmers the tools needed to reach net zero emissions by 2040. And the outside, pardon? Oh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the Agricultural Resilience Act, did I say that? And um, outside of uh, her work, Chelsea uh, enjoys gardening, which is a great thing for somebody who is a farm um, advisor <laughs> and bopping around DC. So uh, let me turn this over to Chelsea and she will um, speak to us about the uh, Agricultural Resilience Act. Welcome. Thank you, Thank you so much um, and apologies for joining late and for being off video. I was um, staffing the Congresswoman at an event and I am 
sitting outside, um, you might be able to hear some crickets chirping um, in DC. Um, and so I figured for bandwidth reasons, um, would stay off video. Um, but Shana Tova, everyone. Um, my name is Chelsea Glenn, Chelsea Zisman now. Uh, recently got married two weeks ago, so still getting used to the new last name. Um, and I am a policy advisor for Congresswoman Pingree. Um, and Rabbi Lynn, thank you so much for the invitation to speak to the Jewish Earth Alliance um, and thank you to everyone here um, for your engagement on environmental issues and particularly around climate and agriculture. Um, our farmers are experiencing the impacts of climate change firsthand. We are seeing historic flooding, droughts, heat waves, and other disasters that threaten our farm workers and our food supply. And while we know that agriculture contributes to greenhouse gas emissions, agriculture can also be a carbon sink. Um, unlike other industries, agriculture is unique in that crops can draw down carbon from the atmosphere and store it in the soil. There are sustainable farming practices to support pasture-based livestock systems, which reduce methane emissions and improve livestock systems, which um, also improve the quality of our soil and sequester more carbon in it. We can also support more on-farm renewable energy and local food purchasing, strengthen climate research and reduce food waste, all of which help lower our carbon footprint. Now enter the farm bill. The farm bill is reauthorized every five or so years, if we're lucky. Um, and the last farm bill reauthorization took place in 2018. Uh, we've seen the climate crisis re uh, worsen in recent years since the last Farm Bill and know that this Farm Bill represents a significant opportunity to reduce agriculture's carbon footprint and empower farmers to adopt more sustainable practices. Uh, this is something that Congresswoman Pingree cares deeply about. Before she came to Congress, she was an organic farmer uh, running a small farm and selling produce locally. She was a small business owner and also served in the Maine State Senate. Uh, when she came to Congress, she was appointed to the House Agriculture Committee. This is the committee that is charged with reauthorizing the Farm Bill. In 2018, she fought to establish the Local Agricultural Market Program, also known as LAMP, uh, at the uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture, USDA. Uh, which provides resources for local and regional food systems. She also helped support resources for organic agriculture research and more. In 2020, uh, the Congresswoman first introduced the Agriculture Resilience Act. The bill aims to give farmers the tools that they need to help reach net zero emissions in agriculture by 2040. So I will quickly walk through uh, the six core focuses of the ARA. So the first core focus is research. The bill would make sure that existing agriculture research programs prioritize climate change research, increase funding for USDA's regional climate hubs, supports public breed and cultivar research, and creates a new initiative for farmer and rancher research and demonstration grants. Uh, the second pillar is soil health. The bill creates a new soil health grant program for state, local, and tribal governments, authorizes USDA to offer performance-based crop insurance discounts for practices that reduce climate risk, expands the National Agroforestry Center by authorizing three additional regional centers and provides more technical assistance and flexibility in USDA conservation programs to support climate smart practices. It makes significant investments in existing USDA programs like the Environmental Quality Incentives Program, also known as EQIP, and the Conservation Stewardship Program, uh, CSP. We were very excited to see historic funding for these programs in the Inflation Reduction Act, and we'll be fighting to ensure that these funds remain in their intended purpose uh, in the Farm Bill. Another pillar of the ARA is protecting existing farmland and supporting farm viability. So the ARA would increase funding for that program I referenced earlier, LAMP, the Local Agricultural 
market program um, to help keep local farms profitable and create a new soap program for farm viability and local climate resilience centers to help farmers reach new markets. The bill would also increase funding for the agriculture conservation easement program to make farmland affordable for the next generation. Another pillar is supporting pasture-based livestock systems. The ARA creates a new alternative manure management program to support an array of livestock methane management strategies and establishes a new grant program to help small meat processors cover the costs associated with meeting federal inspection guidelines. Another pillar uh, that I mentioned earlier, on-farm renewable energy initiatives. The ARA increases funding for the Rural Energy for America program, REAP, to prioritize low emissions electrification projects and directs USDA to study dual use renewable energy and cropping or livestock systems. And the last pillar is on reducing food waste. Uh, so the ARA would standardize food date labels to uh, reduce consumer confusion and food waste, creates a new, US, new USDA program to reduce food waste in schools and increase federal support for food waste research and outreach, composting and anaerobic digestion food waste to energy projects. Um, so those are the six core pillars. Uh, the bill has a wide range of support, um, including support from the American Farmland Trust, National Farmers Union, National Organic Coalition, National Sustainable Agriculture Coalition, and beyond. We are very grateful for the support of the Jewish Earth Alliance, support of the ARA. Um, right now, we're working to build additional support for the bill. So the more members that we have supporting the bill, the stronger case that we have. We are pushing to include as much as we possibly can of the ARA in the farm bill. Um, and it is my understanding that you all will be reaching out to members of Congress um, in support of the ARA. So first of all, thank you. Um, and second of all, uh, Rabbi Lynn, um, asked for some of the most important things to bring up um, when, when talking to members of Congress. And I think there are three key areas that I, I would say. First being what the issue is in an overview of the bill. So what is happening? Why is there a need for this bill? And an overview of the core pillars of the bill. The second is why it matters to you. This is obviously going to be very different for everyone, but I think that uh, there's something very special and very unique about Jewish Earth Alliance. Um, so what what brings you to the organization and why, why are you advocating for the bill? Why does it matter to you? Um, and lastly, raising if you are a constituent. If you live in the member of Congress's district that you are reaching out to, they represent you. It is their job in Congress to listen to the voices of their constituents and to represent them. So make sure that that is known um, as you are, are reaching out to members of Congress. Um, and that is, is really the overview that I have. I often find that Q&A is sort of valuable and, and helpful in providing information. So I apologize that I cannot see the chat, but if there are questions that I can answer, I'm yeah. um, happy, happy to do that. Yes. Let, thank you, Chelsea. Let, uh, let me get those to you. Um, what was I uh, going to say? Uh, oh, so the, the core matter. Thank, I really appreciate that you gave us the way to speak to our Congress people and research does See, tell us now that personal stories are very motivating um, for uh, politicians and people in general. Um, and mm -hmm. that's why we have for four years now asked people to write these personal stories, their personal experience with these bills uh, or what the, the effect of these bills. So I have one question in the chat and then I'll take questions if you uh, raise your hand. Um, about does the agriculture from from Lynn Feinerman does the agricultural bill deal with pesticides and fertilizers at all? Yeah, so it to my knowledge doesn't specifically touch on pesticides and fertilizers, but rather sort of provides these incentives for sustainable agricultural methods, whether it's you know 
low and no-till farming, supporting, you know, perennial crops, these types of things, supporting pasture-based uh, management, um, rotational grazing, these sorts of things, really encouraging those types of practices um, and providing resources, uh, uh, support for, you know, um, organic cost share certification, um, helping folks transition to organic agriculture and reduce, you know, reliance on pesticides and, and other types of things. As I mentioned before, you know, the Congresswoman is an organic farmer um, and so knows this uh, very deeply. And so that has been, you know, a big aim of the ARA is providing incentives for um that and I saw someone just pop up organic cost share. So that's um, USDA provides resources for folks who are transitioning from conventional agriculture to organic agriculture. Um, and so in the Agriculture Resilience Act, we would increase the cost share um, from I think it's seven hundred fifty dollars now to fifteen hundred dollars um, to help organic folks transitioning to organic uh, make that transition. Great, terrific uh, answer. Thank you, very complete. Um, I wanted, to, I forgot to mention at the beginning that we are going to go over our usual time of top of the hour uh, to uh, 15 after since we have um, this uh, action included in the meeting. And so if you can stay uh, and we will be ask, uh, answering more questions or asking more questions with Chelsea, as well as answering questions about the action. And I also have a special guest, um, uh, Edon um, Goldenpine, who uh, would like to tell us about his work for his bar mitzvah. Uh, so if you can mm -hmm. stay for that, that would be great. So Judy Zinger, um, can we unmute? There you go. You have a question. Yeah, thank you. Um, you kind of answered it. it my, I put in my letter that um, this bill would lower um, carbon and and well would 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 prevent um, more carbon emissions and actually reduce carbon in the atmosphere uh, mm -hmm. through regenerative farming. That is true, is it? Is it not? Yeah, absolutely. And a core goal of the Agriculture Resilience Act is to help farmers and help the United States reach net zero emissions from agriculture by 2040. Um, and so all of the, the policies laid out within the bill are, again, you know, going back to that goal of reaching net zero emissions in agriculture. Great. Um, Maury, so, did you have did you have your hand raised? Thank you for that question. Excellent. Thank you. I, I kind of, I, I'd like to ask you if I- Oh, do you have a thought? Go, uh, if I present this group, um, how long is this program going? Which program is that? Uh, your, the, um, the Rosh Hashanah card program. Oh, we, uh, the deadline is October 5th. Is that right, Mirala? And we are going to That's deliver- That's right, October 5th. And we're right, and we're going to deliver them the next, the following week. Okay. Fabulous, thank you. Okay, all right. Um, Maury, did you have a question or no? I, I thought I saw your hand raise. Up, oh, we can't unmute. Let's see. Can Maury? Right. I don't, so no, my hand, my hand. I'm I'm trying to copy stuff from the chat. Oh. So okay. it, but there's an interesting event I'm going to go to, which is ask. An LA Times reporter, there's a question and answer period on climate issues. And that's actually happening right now. So I think I'm going uh -huh. to, it's, okay. going to be, it's going to be interesting. Okay, you've got conflicts of climate. <laughs> um, but let it's me... about climate. Thank you. Okay, Thank great. You. Thanks. Laura, we have two more Phyllis Rubin and Rachel Macliff have their hands. Okay, Rachel um, Macliff, did you have a question? I have three of them. <laughs> oh boy, can you uh, let's um, let's go with one and and okay. Uh, is there a way to track whether parts of this wonderful bill uh, are put in the farm bill? And is there a way to see what is remaining? Um, I have other questions as well, but I will cede the floor to others. But okay. I, I'm interested. But that's to a really good. What's what's adopted and what isn't? 
Yeah. Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's it's something that we're going to be following really closely. Um, and we can, I can, after this, share my email address with Rabbi Lynn and share it out with any folks who are interested in following it, um, you know, through its process throughout the Farm Bill and beyond. Um, you know, we're trying to make as much progress as we can in the Farm Bill and then, you know, seeing what's left after that and how we can continue to push the the measures that aren't included. Um, and we, I should say too, we've seen USDA do a lot of really great work on its own. Um, you know, they just released funding for a measurement reporting and verification program for carbon sequestration. Um, and so we'll continue to work with USDA and work with other agencies, even outside of the farm bill to help push some of these things. Um, so we can keep in touch on, on our wins in the farm bill and um, the work that remains to be done. Thank you. Good. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. A good uh, political question. Um, uh, Phyllis Rubin. Hi, um, uh, Chelsea. I was uh, just in Washington uh, at the beginning of last week before Russia Hashanah with the National Farmers Union, the Pennsylvania chapter of the National Farmers Union uh, lobbying about the farm bill. And um, the farmers union is very attentive to have only be advocating for bipartisan bicameral legislation and the agriculture resilience act as wonderful as it is and i personally strongly support it and in my background this is these are the heirloom tomato mixed quartz that um, uh, my certified organic produce farm sells um they they don't even have it listed because they think it just will not doesn't have a chance because it's not bipartisan, doesn't have bipartisan support. And instead, so I'd, I'd like to hear what your, you know, what Congresswoman uh, Pingree's feelings are about that and her response. You know, instead though, they, uh, they have a whole long list, but there's the uh, very similar Strengthening Local Processing Act and Local Farms and Food Act. And then also the Cows Act and Cover Act that are about pasture raising animals and composting essentially. Um, that seem to be very similar to <laughs> yeah. what's in the Agriculture Resilience Act, but are somehow separated out and somehow have become bipartisan. And I just uh, yeah. wonder, you know, if, if it makes more sense for us to actually try, especially those of us who don't have senators like John Fetterman as our senator, um, to, you know, to be supporting these other alternatives that are very yeah. similar. Yeah, Chelsea, what do you think of that? Yeah, absolutely. It's a really good question. And Phyllis, I'm, I'm glad that you brought it up. Um, you know, it is something where the Agriculture Resilience Act is a very large bill. I think it's 200 plus pages and represents sort of a broad vision, again, with these six core pillars of sort of what we see as the, the way forward to helping address climate and agriculture. Um, that said, you know, we have a, a broad array of Democratic support, um, but right now the co-sponsors are Democratic only. Um, there have been these sort of pull apart pieces of the ARA that are what Congress calls these standalone bills. So sometimes members will introduce a broad package and then other members will introduce just these tiny pieces of this larger bill. Um, and so there are pieces of the ARA that we have seen have bipartisan support. There are some pieces on food loss and waste, on Food Date Labeling Act. Um, we have a bill with Representative Newhouse, a Republican from Washington. Um, the Cows Act that you mentioned, you know, alternative manure management programs. This is a bill Representative Costa introduced that Representative Valadeo, another Republican from California, has supported. So we have really been pushing the Agriculture Resilience Act because we see this as, again, sort of the, the broad, like, all of the things that will help um, address these things, but recognize it's that. Comprehensive. Exactly. Um, that, you know, House Republicans are in the majority on the House side. We've been working closely with um, Chairman Thompson, brought him to Maine for a Farm Bill listening session. Um, where we raised a lot of these issues. 
Um, and so, you know, recognizing that it will be important to have bipartisan support for some of these pieces. Um, and so we've been glad to, to see the standalone bills and we'll push for support for those, but we'll continue pushing in the farm bill and beyond for this comprehensive package of the ARA. Great, I'm glad we got Thank an you. overview of that. And, and on that, um, our bar mitzvah candidate has a question. Um, uh, oh, where did it go? Done. Um, he was asking, uh, I just lost it. Let's see. Which districts currently have centrist representatives that currently oppose this bill um, that could be major targets for persuasion? A very yeah. strategic question. Yeah, and Mazel Tov to the Bar Mitzvah candidate. Um, yes. And it's it's a really good question and one you know, I think that there are, are different websites that represent the the folks that are, you know, more moderate. There's a, a caucus, actually, the Bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus, I believe, mm -hmm. um, and its members, um, both Democrats and Republicans, that are really working to find, you know, common sense solutions in Congress that can make it across the finish line. Um, and so I would say certainly worth looking at members of that caucus. There's also a caucus, um, the Conservative Climate Caucus. These are Republicans in Congress um, that are, you know, looking at climate change and, and possible solutions there. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you can just Google Conservative Climate Caucus and, and the list of members on that caucus will come up. Um, and so there's there's some, um, you know, common ground there that I think is is helpful in, in starting a conversation about these types of things. Um, and would certainly encourage you all to, to look at those folks too and, and reach out to them. Okay. Um, let me take one more question from Lavona Gro. Hi, um, I'm with the Unitarian Universalists and we actually have a conference in town um, here in DC next week on this topic in this bill, one of the, the marker built these bills are uh, what we're going out lobbying on. So I wanted to continue with that theme about approaching um, Republicans. And I presume the cost is part of the problem as well. What is some of the, the, the language that might resonate with them that you might suggest that we um, touch on or what information could we gather when we meet with those Republican members that might be useful to you to feed back to you about their positions? Yeah, absolutely. I would say just about every member of Congress has a farmer in their district, represents a farmer. And if they don't represent a farmer, they represent people that eat food. Everybody eats food. It's one of the reasons why I love agriculture is because it impacts everybody. Um, and so really appealing to these things that resonate with every member of Congress, right? These are farmers that are seeing, you talk to any farmer and they'll say, you know, I experienced, you know, in Maine, we have farmers last year who were experiencing drought, this year are experiencing flooding, and that's impacting their crop yields. Um, these are farmers that are utilizing, you know, conservation programs at the National Natural Resources Conservation Service, NRCS at USDA. They're wildly popular programs. Whether you're a Democrat or Republican, it's helpful to get some cost share from USDA to, you know, um, help with a hoop house or help with irrigation or these other things. Um, and the ARA provides additional resources for these programs that we know farmers like. They just need additional resources. And so, you know, talking about the common ground that's there, that, you know, we all know that farmers are, are being impacted by climate change. Whether you call it climate change or an extreme weather event, we're, we're all seeing it. You can't deny that. Um, and so what is the solution? What are the next steps? And this is what we see as, um, you know, a list of things that can help farmers be successful and help us continue to put food on the table. All right. Thank you so much, Chelsea. This was very much worth waiting, worth waiting for you uh, to come on, on the call. There's still a bunch of questions left. Is it possible that people could write you at your Absolutely. Email? What um, can you give us the email? So we'll put it in the. Um... Yeah, absolutely. So it is my first name, Chelsea, C-H-E-L-S-E-A mm -hmm. dot. And my last name is Zisman, Z is in zebra, I-S-S-M-A-N mm -hmm. at mail 
M A I L dot mm-hmm. house dot gov G O V is in Victor. Okay, Chelsea. Whoops, I've got an extra A in here. Chelsea Zisman at mail dot house dot gov. Let me put yes. that in the chat. Thank you so much, and um, thank you so much for for ba- uh, juggling all the time uh, and programming tonight and uh you really filled us filled out what uh judy had had started to introduce um to us as the pillars and have answered many of our questions but you can see our people are very involved and very um uh knowledgeable i think about uh what we're doing and so you've added a lot of depth to it so we really really appreciate it give our regards to the representative and um, I hope some t- someday we will um, be, well, w- when we deliver, we'll, perhaps we will run into her uh, on Capitol Hill. So that would be oh, just wonderful. terrific when we do- deliver these letters. All right. Um, oh, uh, Mirla wanted me to tell you all how many, uh, we received 13 letters. Um, 13 letters. Let me see what else did you say? Oh, so we're hoping that, the, uh, 30 more particip- the, the 30 more participants that we have will also send letters. And if everyone does, we will have over 120 Rosh Hashanah cards to deliver just from tonight. So that would be fantastic if when we get off the call, you're able to finish them and send them to our uh, email address. Um, I want to introduce you to Idan uh, Golden Pine, which is such a great name for uh, a climate um, advocate. And he is having his bar mitzvah in November. And um, can we uh, spotlight Idan? Yes. There we go. Where is he? There he is. Uh, Idan, can you come on? Can you uh, turn on? We saw you. (laughs) I can't spotlight him unless he puts on his camera. Uh, Put on your camera. Here he comes. Yeah, I can't hear. Oh, you can't hear? I I can't hear. I, I can't hear. There you are. There you are. Okay. Uh, this is mom. Um, we can. Th- help <laughs> with can you can you hear now? Can you hear me now? Nah. Oh. All right. So we we can help with that. Uh, we're uh, hiding I in a different room to pretend we're not here. But uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Zoom client is. If if you could wait just one minute, we will. Oh well, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Now I can hear. Okay. So okay. Ju- uh, okay. While we're waiting, can I ask Judy? Did you have any um other things that you wanted to close well, out? Up. Oh. All right. Wait a minute. Here we have you done. There Are you there? Go. Is it working? I think so. Okay. So I, mean, I, Gold- well, I hope everyone else can. Yes. Um, so Edan Golden Pine is uh, lives in Arlington, Virginia, and he's a student of Joel Nove, who is uh, the uh, at IPL in the uh, DMV, the uh, DC, Maryland, and Virginia area, and on our steering committee as well. And uh, Edan became well i wanted to ask you how did you become excited and interested in uh climate issues well i've kind of been interested about this my entire life i mean in the march of science of 2017 i remember doing something climate related uh whether that be a poster and i've done it that pretty much every year since i've done at least something climate related mm-hmm. i'm extremely passionate about this issue i always have cared about the environment and and i've realized like from for a while that this is actually a very pressing issue and i I feel like a lot of people my age are ignoring it Mm -hmm. especially in middle school when people are just not politically minded at all right and so So, what did you decide to do for your bar mitzvah project so i'm going to set up a lobby uh, a booth in the lobby of my synagogue during Hoshana Rabbah and the sec- and 22nd of October, which is a bit later than the deadline of the cards. I hope they can still be mailed in. And then I'm going to get people to be able to write their own cards 
And I'm also going to put this on the synagogue's list serve so that more people come on those dates to uh, get the cards. So um, uh, for those who may not know, Hoshana Rabbah is the last day of Sukkot and you can write on that day. So that's a good time to have it. And um, it's a day for gratitude to the source of all creation for protection so that we are able to grow, grow crops um, so that we are able to have food uh, uh, and, an ab and in this country, an abundance of it. I'm sorry that the person from uh, the Jewish Youth Climate Movement has signed off, but I know that you said that they were uh, also influential in you getting involved in climate issues as well. Is that what you said last night when we talked? Uh, they yes. However, uh, so at, especially at Ramon the Rockies, which is a uh, which is a boy camp I went to, uh, there were oh. uh, some Jewish Jewish climate members came in uh, on the third Shabbat and spoke about climate issues, and that kind of galvanized me to. Uh, just uh, like when I got back to like move as fast as possible and try to do something about it since I didn't really have very much of a Mitzvah project before that happened. Mm -hmm. So they, they got you thinking uh, more concretely about what you wanted to do? Yes. Yeah. So, um, so you haven't yes. gotten a response from people uh, from your community, um, Agudas Achim, um, yet you're going to be doing this October 5th, right? Right I on the deadline. Oh, no. Oh, shucks. Can you hear me now? No? No. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to have... Uh, I did not hear any of that. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, we have to, we have to sign off. And um, we'll have to invite you back yeah. after you've done your project. Hmm? Okay. Yeah, we'll have to invite you back after you've done the project. Um, but we okay. have to sign off as well. And uh, so I want to wish everybody a beautiful um, New Year's and uh, an easy fast. And uh, may you have a, a beautiful New Year of health and fulfillment in the work that we do individually and the work that we do together. And may you enjoy uh, joyous moments with your family and friends in the coming year. And may we hear much good news on the side of the earth and the side of the climate of the earth and the human transformation. So thank you all for coming. And thank you for those who stuck through uh, and uh, were patient with uh, our um, mixes up tonight. Um, but uh, you were all terrific. And we hope to see your more and more of your letters coming in. And we'll get them, to, uh, get them on Capitol Hill and report back on that. And see you next month. Thank you all very much. And thank you to, my, te thank you to my tech people. Thank you, Amy. And Mirala for um, definitely helping out tonight with tech. And Judy Burlfein for helping us on the uh, uh, action alert, our action tonight with the cards. And thank you, Idon, for uh, your continued work on climate.